people often ask me, Brian, should I flush my transmission? And I just kind of, eh, fluid change and clean the magnets, the best freaking thing you can do for your transmission. Brian, should I use chemicals? Should I chemical flush my transmission? No. <laughs> no. No, you should not do that. That does not do anything beneficial for your transmission whatsoever. And more often than not, it will shorten the life of your transmission. It will ruin it. That stuff has short chain solvents in it that will destroy your O-rings. And then you'll lose pressure where it needs pressure and it will shift poorly. It will also cause it to strip away any chance that your older transmission clutches have of having friction that they need to have in them. Don't do that. You're welcome. Ryan's Mobile One. This is a 2004 Honda Odyssey. It's got the 3.5, like most all the Odysseys do. If you still own and drive one of these things, there's a good chance. If you haven't changed the transmission fluid already, you should. It takes a special kind. It takes the Honda Genuine HG automatic transmission fluid, and you see it says ATF DW. It takes 3.1 quarts is what they say. Where you drain it from is out the bottom of the transmission right here. And if you look at that, that's 3 8 inch. So you just put your ratchet directly into that and switch it to loose and pull it out. Be sure to check the washer. It's got an aluminum crusher washer. If it's crushed and around the sides and been done before, uh, you'll need to replace that and have that ready to go. If not, you're fine. Where you fill the transmission, going from the battery looking over the top, is right down that hole right there. You can see that it's kind of a plug. What they did is they took the drain plug and drilled a hole in the middle of it. And you see that there's a hose right there. That hose connects onto this and then there's a 12 millimeter bolt that holds that down. So you need to get your 90 degree needle nose pliers. The reason why you do the 90 ones is for access. They just, it works better that way, but they're also parallel. So that when you grab a hose clamp and squeeze, you can wiggle it down and then grab the hose from the sides, rock it back and forth, and then slide it off. The way I do it is I reach one hand down through here, reach one hand down through here and the other to there. This one being a 2002 to 2006, it's got this return line where transmission fluid comes back into it. So make sure to lubricate the o-ring, you know, wipe it off so you don't make a mess, but then lubricate it again before you put it in and twist it a little bit as it goes down in. And then reconnect your hose. You'll notice that I have this electric plug pulled out. You have to pull up on this little tab here, and then the bracket that goes in this spot right here will let go. It goes underneath of there, so you lift up on this, slide it back, and then put it out like that. You need 3.1 quarts of that ATF. DW-1. When you pull the plug down there, when you pull it out, it'll be covered in metal filings like this. Clean it off, make sure it looks like this before it goes back in, and then snug it down. About 22 foot-pounds will do it. Obviously, it would be very difficult to hit that from clear up here with any kind of bottle or whatnot, so you got to use a transmission fluid funnel, just like you'd use in the dipstick tube. Press it down in there. On the 2001 and older models, uh, you can wiggle that little fitting on the hose here and get rid of that and just set it aside, tuck it out of the way, and you just drop three quarts of fluid down in there. Now the check process on this is gonna stump everybody in the lube shops. I've seen them screw this up so many times. The dipstick's right here, and the way to check it is check it when it's all warmed up, and there'll be two little dots on this. Those are the two dots. The fluid should be at least up to the bottom dot, and no higher than the second dot. If you're below, you're gonna be sucking air, it's gonna be frothy, transmission damage will ensue. If you have it too high, you can get P0780, P0730 codes for hard shifting. So make sure to not mess that up. You wanna check it when the transmission is hot. Now most transmission dipstick tubes, they'll say on the side here, they'll say, check hot while idling in neutral or check hot while idling in park. With this, you wanna check it when it is off, when it is up to operating temperature and you can have it in park neutral, whatever crap gear you want, it's off. When it's off and hot, you check that. When it's hot, the fluid will be higher than when not. If you check it cold, it's gonna be clear down past the bottom of this like it's not showing. So you have it off and hot and it should be no higher than this and should be at least up to that. That's about as clear as I can make that. If you got that and you can do that right, you're in the top echelon of people who work on their car, so good for you. So with the funnel in place, have it spout. It feels backwards, but this is right. And you just kind of get it to where you're kind of close to the back edge of stuff and just go really slow and smooth so that the fluid's not wavy and swinging. 
and just get going with it and then as you start to pick up momentum you can back off with the bottle if I can do this one handed holding a camera and looking through a viewfinder you're just going to be okay with two hands and just paying attention to that that's how you pour a quart into it you gotta do three point one do three of them and then check everything and then go back and transmission fluid it's sticky and it pours slow so what I like to do is let it sit there for a minute and uncrack it because I'm not doing anything else with the other bottle anyway and this way you have less fluid going to the landfill and a more accurate fill on what you're doing so while I've got this out here I'm pull this up and throw it away and do it again I'll leave a link for these in the description. If you look down there and you have a plug, then you've got a 2001 or older, just pull the plug out. It should be a 17 millimeter, and you'll need a couple of extensions. I go half inch drive on this, and so I've got one nine inch half inch extension. I get a 17 deep, this extra length of a ratchet, I crack it loose, and then just spin it out the rest of the way until it kind of spins freely. Then I take my finger, stick it at the bottom, I grab the edge of that plug and just pull the whole thing up all together. In the meantime, I just let all that weight of the extensions and stuff sit on top of it. It won't go anywhere. And then just up and out. Same thing when I go to put it back in. I just chase it. I'm holding the socket and I'm holding the edge of the bolt, the washer, and just put it back in. And then just spin it. Get this all straight up and down. It goes in nice and straight by hand and then torque it down at the end. A good way to tell if you are at operating temperature is you hear that extra droning sound, that's the fans. It means it's getting up high enough where the fans have to kick on, you're probably good. I let this run with the front wheels in the air, back wheels, it don't matter. You can also tell if it's at operating temperature if the temperature gauge looks like that. So we'll go ahead and turn this off. Yay. Throw it in park so we don't forget when we go to put it down. You want to wait just a second or two just to see that all the fluid gets to the pan. You see how high that looks when it's running? It basically just throws it all over it. And even though I just put three new quarts in, it's still kind of brown. That's because there's a lot that's in the torque converter. But you can see we're just right in the money where we need to be here. If you want to do this two or three more times in the manual, it says that you can do it. Um, the stuff's about 10 bucks a quart. As, as far as I'm concerned, if you're swapping it out like that and the color's not, that's okay because the more that you flush it, it and don't pay somebody to flush it, do not go to the G loop. They will screw your car up, especially if it's a Honda and they're not trained on Honda. If there's a chance they could do it right, but most likely they won't. That's been my experience, that's my opinion. And if it's not perfectly red color, that doesn't matter. The dark color comes from the clutch basket material. This is a motorcycle and it has a wet clutch. That's the clutch case right here. And if you were to go inside of there, you'd find something like this. You'd have all these metal baskets and you'd have gear mesh or whatever. Uh, but you'd also have friction material that looks kind of like a brake pad on both sides. So this would be the brake pad stuff. And this wears off just like brake dust. So you'll have a friction material and then you'll have a steel, what we call a steel. So the friction material grabs to the outside of a clutch basket and then the steels grab to the inside or vice versa just depending on the design. But as this stuff wears off, bear in mind you've got stacks and stacks of these and in an automatic transmission on a car you've got three stacks of them. So that dark fluid color isn't from like burning or carbon or any of that kind of crap so much as it's, well it's probably carbon in this, but this stuff wears off, it makes dust and then that gets in the fluid and makes it dark. You may likely have noticed brake dust like that on your wheels of your car. Same thing. Does this stuff hurt when it's in here? No, it's already in here. <laughs> so if you have an excess of that discolored stuff, is it going to hurt anything? No. Is it going to create better grip? Yes. If these are worn down and almost worn out, and then you do all brand new fluid and it doesn't have any of this floating around in it, then it's going to slip. So bear that in mind when you're being OCD about the color of your fluid. It doesn't freaking matter. Cleaning this magnet off so that there's no metal on it that can get on your magnetic sensors, that is important. And having the right kind of additives and properties not be worn out, that's also important. I would do it twice if it was as brown as this one was at the beginning. Uh, but once is good, twice is better. Doing it once or twice is fine. Bonus footage at the end.
Thank you.